come to Las Vegas to test out the two biggest, baddest trucks you can buy, the Ford Raptor and the Ram Runner. In the early 2000s, the truck market started to shift from rock crawling to higher speed Baja style pre-running. The manufacturers saw an opportunity to fill that niche and hopefully make a pile of cash in the process. Chrysler turned to their performance division Mopar to develop a kit that would take one of their 1500 vehicles and turn it into a pre-runner. Ford, on the other hand, they wanted to sell the customer a pre-runner right off the showroom floor. Which company has the right strategy? It's what we're here to find out. We're starting out our road loops in the Bram Runner, and a lot of you are probably wondering, why are they even bothering with road loops in off-road vehicles like this? Well, these are serious off-road tools, but most people that buy them, they're gonna use them as their daily driver. You have to be able to live with this thing unless you have the rock star status to have this trailered or helicoptered out to your off-road route. This is a little bit uh, more off-road focused than the Raptor. What I'm noticing immediately is that there's not a lot of precision. It takes a lot of steering lock to get it to turn. It kind of wanders around. It's tough to kind of keep it on a line. Now these big tires have a lot of grip to them which is almost a bad thing because this thing has so much body roll. Part of that is because it's lifted and part of that is just because the springs and the dampers are really soft. That's the kind of thing that can really wear you out when you're road driving. The constant attention to keeping it in the lane, just these little steering corrections, it's constant work. Now the Ram Runner kit doesn't include tires and wheels. Anyone after a truck this serious would probably be willing to deal with the shortcomings. However, I have a feeling the Ford is probably easier to deal with on a daily basis. The steering on the Raptor is so much more precise. You turn in and it goes. The Raptor is probably the best handling F-150 that you can buy. There's a sick and twisted part of me that wants to bring the Raptor out to a track day. I'm pretty sure you could actually run down some of the lower powered BMWs. Ford has definitely tuned the suspension different on the Raptor. It doesn't wallow around like the Ram. It doesn't have the same amount of suspension travel, and we'll probably notice that tomorrow on the off-road section. But here on the road, it feels so much better. The Raptor is far more confidence inspiring. You kind of set it into a turn, pick your line, and it stays there. If you hit a bump mid-corner, it doesn't jump sideways like the Ram was doing. It's way more fun in the twisties. Everything about the Raptor is more predictable. The brake pedal is always right there. The throttle, it feels more linear. It almost feels like a sports car, just another two feet off the ground. I could drive this back and forth to work every day. We're here in the middle of nowhere, Nevada, to see what these two trucks can really do in the environment they were designed for. We have off-road racer and professional driver, Joe Bacall here with us, and he is gonna put these things through their paces, just like he does in the Baja 500. Joe, what exactly are we gonna do today? Uh, we're gonna do an autocross course. Um, we're gonna run some rock crawling. We're gonna do some high-speed chicane, as well as some high-speed mogul testing. This is really gonna show what these trucks are made of. Let's see how it goes. So what we're going to do right now is I'm going to go through this course and I'm kind of a little bit of talk through what I'm feeling on this Ford Raptor. As I come into some of these chicanes, you know, the steering angle itself, uh, or main shaft angle, isn't very much. The vehicle moves, you know, pretty quickly and it, it, it's very matched to my input. You notice the steering wheel isn't moving much. I mean, that's a this is a pretty big you know turn here. I mean, it's at 90 degrees, and you know we're getting right through that corner. What I like about it too is just you know when I throw the car sideways, I'm getting oversteer, but it's not a snap oversteer. It's not a, a large overshoot feeling. 
very slow, very predictable. Well, that's what you want when you're out in the desert. And even on the pavement, if the vehicle starts to rotate on you, you want to be able to predict what's going to happen. In this vehicle, I can do that. I'm getting a lot of feedback. It just has a real sporty feel to it. Shoot, I can just throw this thing into corners really hard and it's a piece of cake. This will make any driver look good. You know, racing in Baja, this is similar to my race truck in a lot of ways, um, just because I run the stock full class. I think with a little modifications, I think this Ford Raptor would be the, uh, the truck of choice for me. I'm picking up right now is it's going back and forth looking for the right gear. You can hear it. You know, RPMs are just bouncing. It really needs to hold that gear. I'm in drive mode, so it's a little bit expected, but I think it's excessive in this case. Here, I'm going to go ahead and put this in manual mode because I'm really having a hard time getting this vehicle to hold the gear. Again, even in manual mode, this vehicle will not hold its gear or its RPM. And it's, it's apparent that it doesn't like what I'm doing. Hard on the brakes. Big bump steer out of this. Wow. You know, look at how much steering angle I'm putting in this vehicle. I mean, this thing has a lot of suspension. The Fox shocks are, you know, there's no question they're, they're an awesome piece of machinery, but I'm going over these little small bumps here and there, and it feels a little bit too firm. Um, a lot of head toss, a lot of movement. I got a feeling once I get into the actual hard pack desert, I mean, I'm going to launch this truck and it's going to be no problem. It's going to soak it all up. But in this situation right now, I'm getting a lot of movement out of it. Okay, Joe, we've been out here for hours. First of all, what did you think of both of these things on the autocross? There's no question, there's a little bit of a difference between the two. Mm -hmm. um, when it comes to the Ford, you know, a lot more precision, a lot less steering input and angle. I was able to get through those corners. In the Dodge's case, um, a lot more steering angle, uh, you know, pushing a little bit, a little bit understeer. Um, it just didn't feel quite as together and as precise. I agree. I felt a lot more confident in the Raptor. I felt like I could do what I wanted with it. Uh, it was so good that I could think corners ahead, whereas in the Ram, I was always focused on what I'm doing right now, keeping that thing in line. Well, you bring up a good point, Mike, and it really comes down to driver confidence and predictability. If a driver can't run into that, you know, really go into a corner hot and know it, sort of what to expect, then he's got to slow down or she's got to slow down. So there's that, that fine line. I think the Dodge really doesn't give me that confidence, and it sounds like it doesn't give you that confidence as well. Exactly. Next, we went to the rock crawling section. Ford has made this thing a little more of a rock crawler. They've put the limited slip differential on the front. They've done some work to give it an advantage there. What did you think? Well, you know, there's no question that when I drove the vehicles through that rock section, the Ford was just a little more plush. I could actually feel the stroke of the suspension. I'm like, you know, this is, this is nice. I could just kind of walk it through that section. The differences between the two, you have to give the Dodge the approach and departure angles. You've got to get, give it the clearance. The Dodge just felt very, very tight, a very firm feel on the suspension, and it literally just kind of bounced on top of the rocks instead of really just kind of absorbing them. Next, high-speed mogul section. I know you have strong feelings on this one. You know, this is stuff that we experience, you know, racing in Baja, and I have to give it to the Dodge Ram runner. I mean, I'm hitting, you know, high speeds through this mogul section, and I'm just, I mean, you know, trying to left foot brake and really get it set up, but it just floats over some of these big bumps. We did a little bit of timing, nothing official. It seems like you could probably go about 8 to 10 miles per hour faster in the Ram Runner than you could in the Raptor. That is a big deal over a long distance race. One of the things I wanted to do was run a, a really high speed chicane section, just simply on a real hard packed dirt road to feel the, you know, just the vehicle dynamic side of it, the body roll, you know, how much lateral grip I'm gonna get. And the difference between the two is as I start to go into those corners in the Ford, a lot less steering angle. A much better feel on steering effort and the yaw, it was all matched. So my input matched, you know, the vehicle direction, which is exactly what I wanted for the confidence going into that at speed. With the Dodge Ram Runner, a lot different. You know, a large steering angle, not a lot of detent on center. It was just, it just, 
kind of a flat field. So when I come into those corners, I'm having to work a lot harder, larger angles. You know, I'm really just trying to stay on the course at that point. It really comes down to how are you going to use a vehicle. You're not going to be running high-speed moguls all the time. You know, the guys at Fox, you know, Mopar, the core off-road, and these guys all put, put together this package, and I think they did a great job. But what they did was they really focused, at least my opinion, is they focused on the high-speed moguls. There's no doubt the vehicle can fly through the high-speed moguls. But I think there's a bigger picture and you have to look at other areas like ride comfort and just general handling on table. There's definitely a market for the Ram Runner. It's got the look for Baja. There's no question it looks great. But you really want to decide is this really what you want on a daily driver or do you want to put the Ram Runner on a trailer and take it to Mexico and pre-run the Baja 1000. I mean it's that Ram Runner is definitely a purpose-built vehicle. So if you want to go flat out in the desert, the Ram Runner is probably your choice. It's very good in that high speed rhythm section, but it seems like it's kind of a unitasker, whereas the Raptor is a complete product. The winner of this week's head to head is the Ford Raptor.